Hello. This week I'm going to be looking at uh, another way of bringing some life to my uh, war game boards. And um, as you know, I'm a, a great fan of actually putting things in there that give it that realistic touch. They're not necessary for the Battle of Bolt action, but I just like to see it on the board, you know, to make it look a little bit more lived in. So this week what I'm looking at is uh, animals. Um, particularly, I'm going to be focusing on farm animals. Now, across time I've picked up a number of different uh, animal supplies. Um, I've got these cows. Um, I've also got pigs by the same people, actually. And sheep. Uh, is called Serious Play. And they do a good animal range. Another one, uh, metal animals, and this one's a pig. I get them from uh, Pendraken. They do a very good range of uh, farm animals and chickens and all sorts. Um, this week, I'm going to be focusing mainly on the cows and the sheep because I'm looking to populate my fields. So I'm going to build a few of these up, including these ones. Um, which you're probably familiar with from Warlord. Um, so I'm going to put these together because they're in two, two or three pieces. And uh, and then I'll bring you back. So what I've done now is I've put together the uh, Warlord animals, which were in two or three parts, and. Uh, I've stuck them all onto here using double sided tape and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them uh, a primer of this uh, Citadel Wraith Bone. Now the other thing to note is I've got these uh, five metal sheep from Pent Dragon. Well they've actually got like a solid base on them and they don't fall over so I'm not actually going to base those I'm just going to paint up the base that they stand on and that'll be good enough and I can just put them where I want them all of these other ones uh, from uh, Serious Play and Warlord what I'm going to do with the sheep is I've got the little 25 mil discs that you put the soldiers on and what I've done is I've used this card that's got flock on it. Now I picked this up from a local model shop and basically what it was, it was a bit that was obviously most of it had been used and it'd been put in a box of all sorts. So I've got bits of trees, bits of bush, the odd bit of flock, a bit of a roll of this, obviously from somebody doing a train layout um, but what I've thought is I'm going to use this so what I've done is I've cut out the discs to match the, the discs that we put the soldiers on and I've cut a round circle of this on and stuck it to each one and then I'm just clamping it while it dries. Now that's great for the sheep but if you look at all these cows they're too big and I didn't really want to go to the trouble of putting them on any other type base but there's another idea that I've had and I've been doing this for a while and I didn't really know what I'd end up using them for but this seems like the ideal little project now what it is on the um, army paint spray cans uh, if you're familiar with them they have an identity disc on the top, which is separate, you know, well, it, it's connected to the lid. And basically, it's in whatever colour is in the can. And what I've been doing is, whenever my tins have been empty, I've been pulling these off before I've thrown the can away. Sorry about that, the, the uh, battery ran out on the camera. Yeah, so I've been taking these lids off of the army paint 
uh, lids. I'll show you with this one. You see on this one, because it's varnish, it's got a clear one. And all you do is you bend the lid, get your fingers under it, and it pops out like that. And uh, basically what I'm doing is I just cut off the little piece that goes through that held it on the lid. And the same, I'm cutting a disc of the green paper to the same shape and sticking that on. And I'm going to use these paint uh, indicator things from the lids to mount these uh, cows. So it's worked out quite well, and they're ideal for the job. Um, um, I've already done a few of them, and I've clamped them up while they dry. So it just shows it's, it's worth uh, having a look at things before you throw them away. I mean, what I tend to do is I use any lids from spray tins, to mix paint and stuff like that in but these uh army painter ones they've got an hole in so you can't use that for that but nevertheless these little discs that they put on top are ideal as bases what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take these animals outside and give these a spray of the undercoat and uh, then i'll bring you back right just to update you on uh, where i've got to um, as I said before, I've uh, been cutting out shapes from this uh, flocked paper that I came across in the model shop and uh, fitting that into appropriate bases. And then what I've also done for all of them, all sizes, is I've painted the edge green as well so it all blends in. And uh, I've decided as well, even though these metal sheep have got a little bit of a base, that I am actually going to base them on their own individual bases. I just think it'll give it a bit more stability and make it easier to store as well. So the only other thing that I've done um, is I've also got some uh, dead animals from Warlords which consists of uh, two cows which are put together and uh, undercoated and uh, one dead horse as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the painting of these that I undercoated and what I'll do is I'll bring you back from time to time just to show you what I've actually done. Right, so I've given given everything a coat of white um, because obviously I want that to be its base colour as it goes down. Um, and I've started looking up some common breeds to Europe, you know, across France and Belgium and uh, Holland. So I'm going to squeeze a bit of brown out I have got some pure red so I'll just put a small drip of that into it and see how that mixes Yeah, that's very good. That's, that definitely looks the part. Right. Close in a little bit on it if I can, so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, it seems to be... A, Quite a solid bit around the neck. And a bit around the back as well.
one very distinctive feature um, on this one when I get to it is around the eyes definitely seems to have a mask type appearance sorry I keep drifting off the camera So around the uh, nose area, it seems pretty dark. A patch up. Oh, so it's coming along so far. But like one of the very distinct areas is around his eyes, so I'm going to do that now. off again Just do a little bit more on this rear and and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave any of the pink bits until the brown's dried um, so the skin tone parts around the uh, udders and things is going to be left for now and I'll just go on to do more of this right I'll bring you back in a bit. Right, so I've done four of the cows um, in that style. And now what I'm going to look at is the other uh, common breed across France and Belgium and Holland. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is now, but I just wanted to get the colours right. Didn't want to paint them black and white like ours <laughs> and then find they weren't so common there so I don't I don't do the rivet counters count cows as well? I don't know. But uh looking at some of the airs that I've seen uh rivet counters uh mocking, maybe cows do enter it. <laughs> right. So that's that one. Oops. first so that's where I've gone for on that one I don't seem much in the way of any spots coming off of it so I just keep them to a minimum Uh, 
There we go. We'll go for a quite a bit less red on this one. Now the ears. I think I'm going to leave that one like that, just back on his leg. I'll do. So I've finished uh, painting all the details. You know, all the eyes and the feet and everything else on all my sheep and everything now. And I've given some of these um, a very, very soft brown wash. Um, because, again, it, it matched sheep style that was quite common in Europe. And then, obviously, I painted up the two donkeys at the end as well. And then the other ones, I finished all the cows and the horse. And all the different breeds. So what I'm doing now is I'm just allowing them to dry and uh, in the meanwhile all, all my bases have dried um, so as soon as these are as soon as they're done I'll be giving them a coat of matte varnish um, just to protect it stop any of the paint rubbing off and then as I say I'll be mounting them up on the various sizes of discs that I've got. Maybe I might I might add the odd tuft here and there, but I'm not going to put a lot on it because I want to keep it fairly simple so it'll match in with most backgrounds. All right, so they've all been painted and varnished, and I'm just going to apply them to their bases now. As I say, I'm going to keep it very simple. Um, the first thing is regarding the uh, three dead cattle that I've got. Well, I've got two dead cows and one dead horse. I'm going to put them on a big base because potentially, I know it's unlikely. But potentially they could act as cover so I'm going to glue them onto big bases
Perfect. There would have been a time in the past when I would have uh, just stuck these onto a piece of, uh, you know, scatter terrain. But I think the beauty of going with it the way I have done, you know, on on their own bases, is that I'll be able to put them where I want them. And, you know, as I always say, with my... Uh, my biggest issue is, um, you know, having somewhere to put all my terrain. So the more I can condense it, the better. So having these like this, rather than stuck to a piece of terrain, means the terrain will pack away flatter and I can put these in a multitude of positions. So, right, what I'll do is I'll crack on and get the rest of these done and uh, then I'll bring you back and I'll add some tufts. Stick a little tuft on this one. Like I say, I'm not going to overdo it. I might not even put one on all of them. But just... Just the odd one. It's mainly... Mainly going to be the cows, I think, that I put it on with. Because the sheep take up quite a lot of room on their base anyway so I am putting a spot of glue on even though these are self adhesive Right, I'll carry on getting these all done and then I'll bring you back when they're complete. Right, so I'm calling them complete now. I've just put them on a greenfield type background so you can see them properly. And I think with having a few different varieties, it's going to just make the some of the fields a bit more interesting. You know, to have these placed here and there. I wouldn't necessarily put all of these on in one go. Um, but just perhaps the odd field. And I can just pick and choose what I need in it. So, right. I'm going to wrap that one up. So, thanks for joining me again. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's perhaps given you an idea of how to populate your... Uh, battlefield apart from the soldiers and if you have liked it please consider giving me a thumbs up or even subscribing for when the next video drops okay thanks for now bye